Hello and welcome everyone to this course on quality control and improvement with Minitab. Uh, we are in session 26 and I am Professor Indrajit Mukherjee from Shailesh and Mehta School of Management, IIT Bombay. Uh, so, in last session we are discussing about multiple regression and how to select the variables. You see there are confusions which arises when we have multiple x which is regressed with a y single y. So, we are not sure which variable should be considered which is not to be considered. So, some examples we have taken last time. So, uh, let us try to see whether we can resolve that uh, problem and dilemmas that we are facing. So, uh, this was one of the problem that we are uh, dealing with at the time point that electrical power consumption uh, is uh, uh, monitored over here and this may be related to variable x1, x2, x3 and x4 and the details are given on the left hand side of your screen uh, in this uh, uh, PowerPoint. And uh, we want to see which is the best model that explains y with respect to uh, given x uh, set of x like that. So, what we have done is that we have gone to uh, mini tab and then what we have seen is that these are the variables this from c 5 to c 9, c 5 is the y and c 6 to c 9 is the uh, 4 variables. So, what we have done is that stat we have gone to regression and we have gone to regression and then uh, we have used. Uh, uh, fit regression uh, models and then what we have done is that we have selected y and the set of x conditions that is x1, x2, x3 and x4 and in models what we have done is that all the variables we have considered include constant term and uh, options uh, we have not given any transformation over here and uh, in this case first we have not done not given any uh, let us say stepwise regression over here. And uh, we may see graphs uh, over here, normal probability plot, residual plots and uh, order plots like that. So, this is possible and validation tenfold cross validation that we have discussed last time also we can put over here. And then storage I want to store that the standardized residual let us say and click OK. So, let us try to see what are the results that we are getting. So, uh, Minitab gives you uh, automatically a regression equation over here. But what uh, is surprising over here you see that um, although x1 is the only variable which is uh, significant over here that means less than 0 0.05 and others are not significant terms over here. So, only x1 is uh, showing significance others are not showing significance over here uh, and also you see the r square value adjusted r square is about 76 and uh, tenfold uh, r square this cross validation is around 48. So, when there is a difference between these two significant difference that exists over here there must be something going wrong over here and uh, maybe model fitting is not correct or we have overfitted the model basically ok. So, in this scenario when we are not sure which variable will go in which variable will go out and analysis of variance also confirm that one of the variable x1 is significant, so others are not significant. What we can do is that we can remove all the variables, uh, all the x2, x3, x codes like that and retain only x1 like that, uh, only retain x1 and then we can see. So, uh, what will happen? So, this is trial and error method that I am showing over here without going into our uh, stepwise regression like that. So, I can remove this uh, x1 which are not significant over here and we could have regressed this one. And the stepwise regression we have done none over here. So, in this case I can click OK and see what is the performance of that model. And what we are seeing is that ok x1 is significant that is shown over here regression coefficient and the equation is also given. And uh, but the explained variability is very less r square adjusted is around 60.85 and uh, tenfold cross validation is about 50 percent although uh, now there is somewhat match between uh, cross validation and also r square adjusted uh, somewhat close we can we can assume over here. But still I, I feel that there there could be something uh, more which can be done on this ok. So, lack of fit test also shows that uh, we are above 0 0.05. So, in this case there is no uh, sign of lack of fit. So, then uh, and to avoid all this confusion what we can do is that directly we can use uh, that uh, stepwise regression over here. So, what you have to do is that fit regression model and go to instead of this variable you select all the variables that is x1, x2, x3 and x4 over here. And uh, in stepwise options what you do is that right stepwise over here and there will be a alpha to enter alpha to uh, remove this two you can keep. So, this uh, this methodology works, this stepwise regression works like adding variables and removing variables like that simultaneously it will work in adding and removing variables which is significant which is not significant like that. So, that way it works and the theories can be seen uh, in any books on stepwise regression uh, you have details about this uh, stepwise regression. There are uh, other methods of stepwise regression which is also uh, 
forward selection and backward elimination these are the other two methods but stepwise include forward selection and backward elimination both of them so we prefer to use stepwise regression over here so in this case i click ok and then if you click ok over here what will happen is that uh, you will uh, you will find a scenario over here which is uh, two variables are entered into the model that is x1 and you can see that x1 is also prominent over here 0 0.048 and uh, the other one is x2 is more prominent which is p value is 0 0.026 both are significant and less than 0 0.05 over here and also r square adjusted has improved uh, significantly from uh, 60 to 75 over here and this tenfold cross validation from 50 to 57 it has improved over here. So, in this case we can say that this may be the best model that we have considered over here and uh, we should go uh, we should go about uh, go uh, in implementing this one so this may be this model that we have generated over here now only thing is that residual whether it is uh, normal distribution we can check by uh, normality test over here and the residual will be saved at the end values that we see over here residual 2 that is the final residual after we have run the models and uh, the residual also says that uh, there is no abnormality in the in the normality assumptions that we are considering in the residuals over here 0 0.253 is more than 0 0.05. So, in this case residual also satisfies. So, there is no problem. So, if I consider x1 and x2 in the model with y uh, we are getting x1 x2 significant and also the model adequacy test are quite uh, uh, there is no significant deviation from that ok. So, uh, this is one of the scenario where uh, we can use uh, uh, stepwise regression method. Uh, but for the second case if we consider this one that heat and x1 x2 again the confusion comes again the confusion will arise uh, because and and we can see that one so uh, what we will do is that i will i will take this second one where heat is the y characteristics and that has to be regressed with other variables uh, over here so this is the first example that we have selected and these are the values that we have seen uh, x1 x2 this is with x3 so this is uh, now, this is the uh, variables that we are talking about heat is with x1, x2, x3 and x4, four variables we are trying to regress and uh, then uh, what we can do is that I can go to stat and I can go to uh, regression and then uh, regression and uh, uh, fit regression models over here and instead of this I, I give heat and then I give uh, x1 to x4 uh, variables I select this one. And I do not do uh, stepwise regression at initially. So, I want to see what are the results. So, uh, what will happen is that uh, I have all the criteria. So, uh, and uh, I will store let us say the residuals over here and I click ok. Uh, I want to see what, what model says. So, over here we, what you see is that x1, x2 p values if you observe p values none of the p values is significant, but r square adjusted is highly uh, I am getting a uh, very good model fit over here 97 over here and the tenfold cross validation is also very good over here. So, something wrong is happening because none of the variable is significant, but I am able to predict very very high predictability over here what we are seeing like that. So, this equation uh, means uh, uh, we can immediately we, we can say that let us adopt this one, but we will not do that because there is another issue coming over here which is known as variation inflation factor that is a variation inflation factor over here. So, variation inflation factor indicates that whether there is a uh, situation of multicollinearity in the data set. So, what is multicollinearity we will try to explain. Uh, multicollinearity uh, in, in, in a sense it says that uh, whenever the x are interrelated with each other let us say x1 with x2 or x2 with x3 and the correlation is very high that will influence the model and the model will not be correct and it will give you a bias judgment and the sign sign that you will get coefficient sign that you will get uh, may interchange that means what it should be positive it, it is reflecting negative like that. So, that can happen over here. So, multicollinearity means there is a uh, high significant relationship between the x variables over here and this will be reflected by a index that is known as variation inflation factor that is known as variation inflation factor and uh, uh, this is what what I mean to say over multicollinearity over here. So, you see the numbers of x1 is given over here for a particular and x2 is also simultaneously recorded. So, x1 is 1, x2 is 2 and when this is 2, this is 4 like this, this is 3, this is 6 like this. So, x2 has a functional relationship with x1 over here. So, that means there is a high amount of correlation between the data set that I am having in x1 and the data set that I am having in x2. So, I can calculate the variation inflation factor between this data set. So, 
uh, variation inflation factor for x1 I can calculate similarly for x2 I can calculate like that only two variables over here. So, then I calculate a ri index that is the coefficient of determination over here. So, ri index can be calculated where x1 uh, let us say is regressed with uh, function of x2 like this and then the r values are indicated. So, that is uh, uh, with 1 and 2 like that. So, this values will be indicated and that will be reported over here we can we can put that value and I can get the variation inflation factor. So, variation inflation factor uh, for the first variable x1 will be same as variation inflation factor uh, for because there is only two variables over here say this one and this one like that. So, x1 and x2 if I am considering two variables over here. So, uh, this uh, variation inflation factor what, what uh, you see will lead to uh, uh, lead to models uh, we will not uh, get the best models out of this uh, when multicloniality exists and then the uh, beta coefficient estimation goes wrong and in this case uh, and the prediction will also go wrong. So, if I consider that if I ignore this multicloniality what what can happen is that my prediction model uh, will show something different and uh, actual scenario may be something else like that. So, uh, in this case I need to rectify this multicollinearity. there are different ways of rectifying the multicollinearity problem. So, uh, one of the one of the approach that uh, that takes care of this may be uh, this uh, this uh, what we are using as uh, what we are using there are two methods over here. So, one of the method that is stepwise regression we have adopted like that and that may eliminate uh, this multicollinearity problem that we are having. So, and another method is known as base subset regression based on which we can select variables which will go in and which will go out like that. So, first uh, is uh, base subset uh, that, uh, that we can talk about is uh, stepwise uh, regression like that. So, what we will do is that we will go to regression. So, when we have fitted this model that this variation inflation factor that you see over here uh, what if, if I if I copy this one as image and uh, we can paste it in excel and let us try to see uh, enlarge the image and try to see what what is the results over here. So, uh, variation inflation factor for each of these variables is indicative over here in the vif uh, what we are seeing and uh, we can we can just go to a simple and we can paste this one and uh, what we see over here is basically uh, 38.5 x1 is having a variation inflation factor of 38.5 this is 254 this is 46 there is high amount of correlation that exists between the x variables over here which one is highly correlated which one we can see by the correlation matrix plot and we will be able to know which is related with the, which one. So, uh, whenever this relationship strong relationship exists this variation inflation factor will be more than 5 will be more than 5 or 10 like that. So, uh, generally a statistician follows some rule or thumb rules like that if it is more than 5 we will take action and we want to eliminate multicollinearity problem in the regression equation. So, that my prediction model becomes more accurate like that. So, anything more than 5 is uh, we, we, we may consider as significant and we can take actions over there uh, by using different methods and addressing the regression uh, regression equations like that developing the best regression equation like that. So, here problem is that it is more than 10 or criteria 5 whatever you can select like that uh, and generally recommended is 10, but some some uh, statistician also suggest anything more than 5 is also uh, a concern for me. So, we should uh, we should try to uh, remove that multicollinearity problem and then develop the regression equation line like that ok. So, this is a problem variation inflation factor and in this case uh, the options that we are having is that uh, we will we will go for uh, stepwise regression. So, what we will do regression fit regression model over here. So, this is x1 to x4. So, in this case I will use stepwise regression and let us try to see which uh, how it works uh, in this case and then uh, I will go for uh, let me see storage of this residual is already there and I will click and graph uh, what we can do is that we can see residual versus with normal probability plot after doing stepwise regression validation tenfold cross validation we are doing over here and I click ok. Uh, what we observe is that uh, only x1 and x2 is retained over here. So, you see the equation after doing stepwise regression what is coming out. Uh, on this model and uh, we are getting a regression equation like this uh, and heat is equals to 52.58 into 1.46. This is a coefficient plus coefficient what we have for x1 and x2 and uh, the results also indicate that now variation inflation factor if you look at this column what happened is that copy as picture and if we have taken this as the final equation then the variation inflation factor is near to 1 what you can see if, if I, uh, 
times this one. So, this is near to 1, when it is near to 1 that means it is quite perfect and no multicollinearity problem does not exist now and x1 and x2 are uh, are independent over here. Uh, we can assume independency between the variables over here. So, we have replaced uh, uh, this is uh, x3 and x4 basically, uh, we have we have just removed x3 and x4 over here and uh, the r square value and tenfold cross validation more or less they are close to each other and uh, and ANOVA, ANOVA analysis also shows they are significant and we can see that uh, residual normal probability plot and we can also verify whether the uh, the final residual is uh, normal or not, it is following normal or not. So, what we observe over here is that ok, this assumptions is also validated. So, p is more than 0 0.05. So, this is there is no problem in the in the error res or residuals like that. So, we can we can just remove for our benefit so that later on we have only uh, required information over here. So, what we can do is that. So, this is uh, uh, verified over here. So, two variable goes in and two variable goes out over here. So, that means uh, this stepwise regression has taken care of this multicollinearity problem over here. Uh, somewhat we, we, we are uh, uh, fortunate that this is taken care of over here. So, why uh, and uh, let us try to see multicollinearity issues over here. So, what we can do is that basic stat over here and we go to correlation over here. So, correlations between what we can do is that we can see the correlation between um, heat and the other variables over here from x1 to x4 and we can select this one. I, I want to see the correlation matrix. So, I go to options and I say Pearson correlation I want to say uh, I want to identify and then uh, in graphs what we can do is that uh, I in the plot I want correlation with p values like that because I am interested in p values which is correlated with which one and which is significant like that and we can see pairwise correlation also and when I click ok what will happen you will get some graphs like this. So, uh, this graph will indicate how, what is the correlation between y variable and x1, x2 and interrelationship between x1 and x2, how, how is the correlation. So, if I see the first uh, first column over here, what you see heat is uh, having showing a p value of 0 0.01 with x4 variable. So, heat is highly correlated with x4, it is highly correlated with x3, uh, not so much, it is more than 0 0.05. So, we can we can say uh, that it, that this may not be significant so much, but x2 I see p value is less than 0 0.05 x1, x1, x2 and x4, there are there is highly co highly high amount of correlation that is existing. Now, x1 if you see x1 is highly, if I see uh, within the variables, so x1 uh, how it is related with x4. Uh, it does not have any correlation x4, but with uh, x3 it is having a high level of correlation over here. Uh, so, x1 is related with x3, x1 and x3 are highly highly correlated over here. So, in this case this is the observation. Then similarly, x2 you see perfect relationship exists between x2 and x4. So, x2 and x4 are more or less perfect and the R coefficient is negative coefficient is 0.973. So, negative correlation exists between this variable x1, x2 and x4. So, that means uh, these two variables are highly correlated. Similarly, x1 and x3 is highly correlated. So, uh, whenever high correlation exists and I want to do regression in that case, what is required is that one of the variable has to go, one of the variable has to go out of this x1 and x3, uh, we can think of an x2 and x4 basically uh, has to go, one of the variables has to go and uh, the stepwise regression has correctly identified two variables instead of four and it has identified x1 and x2, it has retained those two variables and removed the other two variables. Because because there is a multicollinearity problem. So, some part of multicollinearity problem can be addressed by uh, when I use stepwise regression, but that can always be verified by seeing the variation inflation factor and seeing the model adequacy and other checks. Uh, and uh, finally, we select the models over here. So, this correlation matrix helps you to understand that which variable is highly correlated with which one, which variable is removed like that, which variable is added by. Uh, so, this is one way of selecting the variables which is known as stepwise regression when there is a multicollinearity problem that is existing over here. Okay. So, uh, this and uh, there is another option which can be explored over here which is known as uh, base subset regression which is another option that uh, this uh, this uh, stepwise regression what the, the, the limitation of this approach is that it will select the final variables x1 and x2 it is selected like that, but uh, uh, it will not it, it has dropped x3 and x4. But scenario can be that I want to explore what happens if I include x3 in, instead of x1, uh, what happens if I include x4 in, in instead of x2 because those variables are easy to control maybe because I want a regression equation where variables can be easily controlled like that. Maybe x1 and x2 is too difficult, but uh, regression equation by significance and best subset uh, uh, 
methodology we are getting x1 and x2 but uh, i want to see uh, the complexity if i if i if i use different combination like that if i use x3 x4 combination what is happening uh, and like that so uh, what will happen so there is an option which is known as best subset regression so if you go to regression regression in many tab you will see an option of best subset over here so if you click best subset regression for this then you identify which is the variable so, I gave heat as the response over here and then x1 to x4 these are the variables I want to include in the model uh, which is free predicted over here. So, if you want some predictor to be always there in the model, so predicted in all models. So, in that case you can just write x1 to be there. So, I am I am I am not uh, identifying that one. So, I, I said every variable is free. So, show me all combinations and best best combinations like that. So, I click ok over here then you will get a uh, information over here which I am copying uh, and uh, I will just paste this information over here uh, so that it is easier to see also. So, in this case what you observe is that uh, there is an indicator which is known as Mallow CP over here which is known as Mallow CP over here. So, this Mallow CP is generally used to select the best model and combination. So, with uh, one variable combination. So, over here what you see is that there are x1, x2, x3, x4 variables over here and there are uh, with one variable that was selected the best model with one variable that is given over here. So, first two is giving you the best model. So, if I include x4 that is giving me a high value of r square adjusted over here and uh, high value of r square also over here and uh, this is the best model with one variable that is selected and that is the summary of that is given over here. Similarly, with second second best models that is with r square value 66.6 and I am getting a variable that should be that should be retained only x2. So, if you model with x4 uh, what is happening with model with x2 what is happening best two models are given. So, with single variable uh, uh, we have uh, uh, four. So, four models can be developed like that four models can be developed like that. So, uh, if you have k number of variables 2 to the power k is the total combinations of the uh, permutation combination we can we can think of uh, all possible models all possible models that can happen like that. So, uh, Minitab only reports that best model with one variable best model with two variable best model with three variable and finally, with all variables like that. So, we will ignore the last one because we want to deduce the number of variables and 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 we will go by the lower combination which is uh, which is giving you uh, better options because I want to deduce deduce the number of variables because I want to control less number of variables like that and also I want to take care of of multicollinearity that is that is an issue ok. So, in this case what we do is that there are three values that we see r square adjusted to make a compromise over here r square adjusted r square predicted and malo cp first we go by malo cp is indi indicator over here uh, which indicates the uh, variance is less and uh, in this case uh, the error that is uh, that is uh, the sum of square error that we are committing over here uh, that that is uh, that we are getting over here is much less as compared. So, how do you, how do we compare that one? There is an indicator that is known as Mallow CP which which says that the thumb rule over here is that the Mallow CP value uh, should be less than the number of variables considered for modeling plus 1. So, that is uh, if you are going for let us say for first one over here. So, this is uh, uh, number of variable considered is 1 x4 is considered over here in the model. So, x4 plus 1 that is uh, that is 1 variable that is 1 plus 1 is 2 and the mallow cp should be less than uh, the 2 less than the value 2 over here and that is not the case over here 138.7 is the mallow cp indicator that we are getting over here. So, this criteria until unless this criteria is fulfilled. So, this is not the best model that we should select. Secondly, second one also you see that 142.5 which is which is very very higher than 2 that also uh, can be eliminated over here. But in the third case what you see is that two variable model when x1 and x2 is considered mallow cp value is approximately 2.7. So, in this case uh, this uh, calculation of mallow cp uh, any books will give you what is the calculation values of mallow cp considering sum of square errors over here. So, uh, the formulation is given. So, I am not mentioning the formulation over here that you can see in any st standard textbook. So, what I am recommending is that this value you see uh, two number of variables. So, total number of uh, 2.7 is less than 3. So, this can be a possible uh, possible combination and also stepwise regression has also shown that this is the combination x1 and x2 uh, is the best combination and that is the best model that uh, stepwise regression has identified like that. Here also the suggestion is mallow cp is less than and very close to the uh, number of variables plus 1. So, this value should be very close to number of variables plus 1. So, 2.7 is close to 3. So, that means this is one of the competitor models. So, 
move over here ok. And this is 5.5 .5, it is more than so this also goes and this 3 is also less than 4 over here. So, this can be one of the possibilities and this is another one possibilities over here. Now, you have to check that whether this model is with 2 variables is good uh, with 3 variables what is happening with with other 3 variables what is happening like that. Because of correlation that exists between these 2 you will find that variation inflation factor will be high whenever I, I consider x 1 and x 3 together or x 2 and x 4 together like that there will be problems like that. So, over here uh, the closest model that means based on Malo CP criteria also we are seeing that x 1 and x 2 is the best one. Malo CP is 2.7, r square predicted is 96 that is quite good enough, r square adjusted is 97.4. Uh, so, uh, and this seems to be the closest one and uh, we should select this one. So, based on Malo CP criteria and based on our uh, uh, stepwise regression we, we are converging to the same models. Uh, which which can be suggested over here which is the best model over here. So, x 1 x 2 variables regressed with y uh, that is the best model over here. So, if we have uh, if we have considered any other combination of that. So, maybe we will not get the best models or maybe the uh, assumptions will be violated assumptions of uh, normality and other assumptions that is there that can be violated heterosclerosis. So, all these things. So, whenever I have selected the best models there is always a requirement for checking the model adequacies. So, all the error terms and, uh, and the assumptions of the errors are to be verified like that. So, in this case uh, what we see and, and we see that x 1 and x 2 is the best selection over here. Uh, okay, we can check uh, what is happening, what is happening if I select x 1, x 2 and uh, x 4 over here, but x 2 is highly related with x 4. So, if we have selected that one variation inflation factor that problem will will come. So, if, if I assume this one, so in this case regression, if I assume uh, x 1, x 2 and x 4. So, in this case if, if I remove this one x 1, x 2 and x 4 and x 2 and x 4 we have seen highly correlated and I, I remove stepwise regression over here. And uh, then I do the calculation over here. Uh, what is being observed? You see that the variation inflation factor that you observe over here uh, is very high. Variation inflation factor is very high over here. If I paste this one over here, and you will find that variation inflation factor is 18.78, 18.78 x2 and x4. There is high high correlation that exists between x2 and x4. That was prominent in correlation coefficient also. So this, whenever it is high, this type of regression equation cannot be used. That is the overall suggestion that we have. Okay. So, uh, and in this case what happens is that why, so let us take this example to finish off with this uh, y equals to and we will continue with another examples and another, another situation in multi, multi, uh, multiple uh, regression when the uh, error assumption fails in that case uh, what we can do like that and then we go into the design of experiment part of that. So, why I am explaining this because when, when we develop uh, design of experiments regression equation we, be, we should be concerned about the variable interrelation between the variables and how to select the best models out of many variables like that, how to eliminate variables like that ok. If this is a scenario y, y and x 1 and x 4, so we can eliminate this one and we go by this uh, regression analysis regression over here fit regression models. So, in this case uh, what happens is that I, I selected y variables over here and then I select x 1 to x 4 and select this one uh, sorry this this has to be coming over here continuous predictor x 1 to x 4 and I select this one and stepwise regression what we have done is that we use stepwise regression over here and use this one. So, suggested model is uh, x 1 and x 2 these are the variables and variation inflation factor is less. So, this can be the best model only thing is that r square adjusted is around 74 75.61 and this is 57. So, there is some gap that we are observing over here 75 and 57 over here. So, whether we can improve this uh, tenfold cross validation over here. So, again uh, what we can do is that we can see this regression by best subset uh, values and uh, best subset regression we can do with y and x 1 to x 4 and try to see what the model recommendation like that. So, in this case what you see is that uh, x 1 and x 2 which is base subset is giving me a value of 3.4. So, this is about uh, 3 over here this is about. So, this is more than 3 basically. So, number of variables plus 1 and this is more than 3 over here. So, uh, and this is 3.8 which is very close you see 1 to 3 4. So, x 1, x 2 and x 3 variables if I consider and that is coming out to be very close. So, Malo CP based on Malo CP index what we are seeing is that uh, if I consider x 1 and x 2 and x 3 variables over here that is giving me a Malo CP which is which is approximately 3.8 which is very close to 4 and in that case 3 variables can be considered. So, if I go over to 3 variables over here fit 3 variables. So, let us let us reduce this uh, let us incorporate x 1 
x2 and x3 the step wise says x1 and x2 only so uh, we will remove step wise over here and try to see what the model gives so uh, if you click okay over here what happens is that it gives a three model three variable models over here so over here what you see is that only x1 is coming prominent and others two are not coming prominent because the p value is uh, more than 0 0.05 over here although the variation inflation factor is not significant over here but r square uh, predicted uh, r square adjusted value somewhat improved and the tenfold cross validation is also somewhat improved over here 62.98 uh, okay but uh, the residuals that I have saved over here, so this is the residual plot that you see. So, uh, when I have used three, three variable models over here, what happens is that if I, if I go to basic stat normal t test, uh, what will happen is that, so if I go to the last variables and try to test this one, what happens is that you see that there is a violation in the uh, error distribution over here. So, whenever I have added this one, so if I have restricted this to two variable models like that, so I, I go to basic regression analysis regression, fit regression model instead of x3, I go to x1 and x2 only which is suggested by stepwise regression and I save the residual over here. And I go the, uh, I do the normality test over here with the uh, residuals, uh, residual 3 which is saved over here and I and I do this and what I see is that the residuals are perfectly uh, following normal distributions like that 0 0.0.253 like that. So, uh, we will always uh, go by uh, suggestions that is uh, what statistician has suggested. So, we go by stepwise regression. We do not add unnecessary variables which are not non-significant terms, but whenever I am removing a non-significant terms, please remember that we are losing some amount of information. So, sometimes people can suggest why, why we should remove that one. So, there is a, con uh, we can, we can debate on that that which one to retain, which one to remove like that. So, this is an art and this is not perfectly black and white scenarios like that in regression, at least multiple regression like that. But there are suggestions which can be incorporated like that. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, based on which we can select the variables. So, one I have shown is that uh, base subset regression is one of the option when we have different combinations of the variables and we can select uh, one or two of them and then try to figure out which, which model is uh, basically good or we use stepwise regression and forget about everything of combinations like that. So, uh, whichever is the best will be revealed and that model we will, we will, uh, we will recommend like that, okay. But you should be caref careful about the model adequacy checks and all these things, okay. Even, even if you have done stepwise regression also, finally you have to make a check of model adequacy over there, okay. So, that is the suggestions and, uh, and there are other ways of dealing with multicoordinate which is more, more uh, statistically sound like that. So, one is partial least square regression and one is principal component analysis based uh, regression like that, okay. So, these things can be adopted. So, we will uh, stop here and we will, we will try to discuss about uh, another example where the uh, multiple regression fails like that and uh, error assumption fails and in that case how, how, how we have to deal with that. That is not discussed, it is discussed in simple uh, regression. So, we will start from here and another example I have on this time velocity, temperature and yield and selection of the variables over here also we will discuss and then we will move into uh, the core concept uh, which is the improvement phase and that is design of experiment. We will try to emphasize now on design of experiments and uh, how do we, how do we do design of experiments, what are the things. So, basic idea of design of experiments in our next session basically. Thank you for listening.